Hey everybody, Andre from Chrome FX Films here, and today we're going to be using After Effects. So I haven't done one of these types of tutorials before, but I'm feeling really good about this, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So, if you have been following my channel for a while, you you have probably seen my uh, 2D After Effects animation that I recently released. It was my previous video before this one. And I got a lot of good feedback on that, and a lot of people have asked me how I approached After Effects and just how I made the animation in general. So I thought I'd make a video for you guys and uh, hopefully answer, successfully answer all those questions that you had. So this is Premiere, Adobe Premiere Pro, and this is one of the software that we're going to be using. Aside from this, I used Mixcraft, which is actually what I'm recording my voice with right now. And I used After Effects, obviously. So I'm gonna go through the process of how I made this video. It's about two minutes long. I'm not gonna go through the entire thing. But, uh, well, I, technically I am, but uh, I'll try and get to the point as quick as I can to make this video as concise as I can. So we're gonna start by opening After Effects here. And here you are. Now, if you look at this, you're probably going to notice there's a lot of a lot of things going on here, a lot of files. Now, uh, here's the short answer. Yes, you are right. There's a lot of things going on here. But I'm going to tell you how uh, this is actually really simple and telling you how you can recreate this. So, I organized my project here by folders. I have my solid shapes, and these were mostly used for the backgrounds. So if I open up a composition really quick, let me open up the first one. I believe I called this hanging on wall. Here we go. So if you saw my video, um, if not, it's up on the screen here. Now you can click on it and watch it first. Uh, and yeah, once you finish that, you can come back here and we'll continue. But if you have seen it, I'll just keep going. So this is the first scene where the guy jumps into the wall, slides a little bit, lightning flashes, uh, and he jumps off the wall and does a little dive. So first thing I want to let you know, the lightning effect was actually done in Premiere here. Uh, it was actually not in After Effects. This was a separate effect. So just fake effects, just manipulating. That's all in the uh, the camera work, I guess. That's part of a, a filmmaker's job is to be able to use the tools that he has to create something original. And you have to use whatever you get. You, so if you don't have the best software out there, you don't have all the tools that you need, or you don't know how to do something, you can find the, the quickest way to do it, and that usually works. In After Effects, here are all my layers. And the way After Effects works is similar to Photoshop, if you use Photoshop at all. By the way, that is another software that I used. I use Photoshop to make this. All these pictures and just everything in here, even the clouds, all that was made in Photoshop. And then imported into After Effects. Adobe is really good on having their software all be friends with each other. That means that they all work together very seamlessly. So if you make something in Photoshop, you can import it into After Effects and with absolutely no problems, After Effects will just take the file and then convert it into whatever type of format that you want. Uh, I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit as I get into how I made this character and animated him. After Effects works similar to Photoshop. Everything that you see here in the main window is all done by uh, layers. And these are the layers here. Each one based on uh, the depth of each layer. You can see what appears behind. What I mean by that is this background sky, this is the gray background. As you mean to see, this was one of the solids from earlier. That's at the very bottom here, so it's all the way in the back. This wall is at the very top, so it's in the front. It's in front of everything else. This really helps you create that illusion of depth in your scenes. Even if they're not 3D, even if you're just working with 2D, uh, that works great because you can easily achieve that uh, depth of field. The rain effect here, I'm going to start with that. Uh, that's just a simple, uh, that's an effect over here in our effects and presets panel. Uh, it's in here, if you just search it, rain, you get this CC rainfall. It is fantastic. And it allows you to adjust very easily. Here you go, rainfall. I can change the speed of the rain. I can change the size of the rain. So now the rain's a lot bigger but obviously that doesn't look very realistic. Not that this video does look realistic since it's a cartoon, but you get the idea. It's all just selling that illusion, helping people forget that this is an animation and just enjoy the video for what it is. 
So I'm going to get into this character now, and this was a lot of fun to make. So I have a separate composition for each object, uh, each animated object. So here I have uh, care in front of each one or character. That's just short for character, char. You can read it like that. Uh, I have one for each scene. Each time the camera switches an angle, I have a new composition. This helps After Effects not use so much memory when rendering these scenes. A lot of times if you're not using an external software like Premiere to compile all your videos, uh, all your animation segments, sequences, the program will slow down. Even if you have a very powerful computer, um, I am running on a PC that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I can easily run all of these at once and I won't have any problems, but not everybody has a computer that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, so that is not always the best option. So I broke it up, and I'm going to explain to you guys what is in each uh, sequence here. So I'm going to open up character building, and this is all it is. So I just made this guy in, after, in uh, Photoshop. I'm going to open up Photoshop really quick. Here we go. Uh, open up my character. Here you go. And this is my folder where I had all my objects in the scene. So where is the character? Uh, here it is, character. This is the same character that I used for all of my scenes. He has a separate layer. This is just like After Effects. Separate layer for each part of his body. And I save this file. And when I import it into After Effects, it gives you an option to break it up into layers so you can so you can individually animate each part, which is what I did here. And I can show you, see this right leg here, I'm just gonna show you that for example, see how it bends. This is actually, see when I play the animation, he's not actually moving. I had to manually move that in the main sequence here, hanging on a wall. So that uh, line or little wire frame that you see there, that's his path. So when he dives off, he follows it. And when he lands on the building, he also follows it. Going back to this layer, or composition, I gotta start calling it composition. It's actually called a composition. The sequence is um, in Premiere. So, sorry, if I've been saying sequence this whole time, I meant composition. But all Adobe software uses um, similar terminology. So I'm gonna show you the way I animated these. So this is the right leg, and those yellow dots are the puppet tool. That is how you can move each limb separately. Up here, if you click this little pin, that is the puppet pin tool, or just control P for short. Now this allows you to take any image, uh, apply joint points on it, joints, and then you can bend it however you want. Some objects in Photoshop or textures that you'll make, characters, anything, creatures, they are more set up for this, and depending on how many points you add, the longer it'll take to animate, but the more realistic the movement will be. I can grab this point and I can bend his leg however I want. Obviously there's no limit, so I have to be careful about that and use my judgment to figure out what looks realistic and what doesn't. So if I play this, I could add an extra key point. Let me move this up here, show you an example, what happens, and bam, it moves up. And that's all this is. Each object has their own set of key keyframes and joints, and I just animate each one and just guess what the animation is going to look like when he jumps off. So I did that first, and then I went into the other composition and said, all right, I'm just going to make him jump off. And then after a little bit of time of animating, see it's rendering this as I play it. Let me play it through here. So he bends off, and I just had him jump off and follow that path. And I also added a slight motion blur, because motion blur, if you don't know really what it does, or you think you don't need motion blur, motion blur is actually really helpful. It, it creates the subconscious effect sometimes, if you use it correctly, that really makes your scene look more realistic, uh, even though it isn't. So this is a cartoon, but just having the motion blur as uh, on the object as the characters are running, or fast limbs, move, limbs are moving fast, uh, it really does make this look uh, more polished and more professional. I'll show you what I mean here. There's a part where he's running. And that this is the raw. That's what it looks like raw. So you see his legs. You can obviously tell they're running. And that's how you animate the characters. So once you're done with your first scene, you go over to File, Export. You have to add it to the render queue. And then it 
renders it and saves it as whatever type of file you want into a certain location. And then I went into Premiere here and I started adding the animation in here. I added the lightning. So if I play it, there you go. And then of course in Premiere, I added the sound effects. So I have the rain running in the back, my uh, music that I wrote for it. Then there's the little sizzling sound, which I actually made for a robotics video a few videos back, a few years back because uh, I've been on a robotics team for almost seven years now. And uh, I had to make a video. I was the media team captain for several years and I had to make a whole bunch of videos. And I'm also a sound designer, so I had to create sounds. So I created this little sizzling sound. So it's the effect that when he hits the building, I try to make it sound like he's sliding a little bit and then uh, he stops, but it sounds like he's sliding on the rain. And then there's the thunder strike here, which is just awesome. And he leaps, little little leap noise, and this next scene where he lands, it's the same thing. You animate the character, add little lightning effects, sound effects, and I'm gonna go and tell you how I got, how I did this one. Actually, I want to tell you guys how I made the rain bouncing effect because you're probably wondering that by now. So this little effect on the wall here, uh, you see it looks like it's actually bouncing off of him too and the wall. It's actually two different two different effects here. This is the wall. It's actually just a uh, particle systems effect. It's a 3D object, believe it or not. I believe I can rotate it. I'm actually rotating it there. Uh, let me see if I can find where it rotates. There it is, direction. So if you look, you see it looks 3D. So I just turned it sideways and made it look like it was actually bouncing off the wall. So it's a very simple effect, but once you use this particle system, you can just tweak the settings however you want. See, I can make the rain go further. And I can just change it to however I want, and then I just chose that. And then for the guy, I just used the little water fountain effect. This is also the particle systems. I just changed the direction, uh, the 3D direction, made it look like it was bouncing off of him and then just played around with the opacity. So that was that. And I did the same throughout this entire video. Now when he, that's right. Let me find where he jumps or he sees the base. This is a base third person. So this was a little fun effect. All this was made in Photoshop. I'm actually working on a Star Wars fan film right now called Revan and a uh, link to that on the screen. And what I did here was I took a texture that I made for Coruscant's cantina background when the main character walks into a cantina. I just took that background that I had to make for that in Photoshop and then I edited it to make it look like it was a base here. Added a couple guys out there, added these fences, I just painted those, added the towers in the back, added the sky solid object in the back. Uh, actually it was in Photoshop but it was the same color so you get the idea. Added the same splash effect on the head and just this little illusion. I made the head move down as the camera went up and I made the background move down slightly slower. So it gives that illusion of the depth of feel that this character is actually standing in front, probably about 20 to 30 feet and it actually looks like it. So it's just very simple uh, manipulation there, mind manipulation. And of course went into Premiere, out of the sound effects and did the same thing here. And then he jumps, there's a little bit of motion blur. You can see the motion blur now is what I was talking about. He jumps. This was an awesome, this was awesome to create. It was just so much fun. This is a, not. it's not actually slow motion. It looks like it, but it's not. I can show you what I did here. This is actually the character that's animated. He's just moving really slowly. That's all it is. And uh, let me find the slow motion, jumping out of the sky. This is it. So what I did here was I took the rain and I just slowed it down. I turned down the speed to 330. Uh, the scene depth, I turned this up. This is what makes it look like the uh, the scene is 3D. You didn't ha you don't have to do this. If I turn it off, you'll actually see the difference here. So it, it will look flat like that. Uh, let me turn this down. So there you go. So it looks completely flat. And even if I turn that down, it just like it, it just doesn't look very. It's not believable. So I turned up the depth to make this look 3D, and then that's what you get. So it's, it looks like it's appearing behind him and also in front of him, but honestly, it's actually just appearing in front of him, but you can't really tell since 
you're probably not looking at that. You're probably looking at the guy coming towards you in slow motion. So that's that. And then I just turned down the speed of the sound in Premiere to make it sound like it, everything is actually moving in slow motion. Then there's the Thunderstrike in slow motion and this little bass drop sound that I had fun with. It actually doesn't really do anything except just make a little cool little effect. And that's that. I used the Matrix Agent Dodge sound when the bullet fires. I just turned the rain sideways in Premiere. Is, I mean, After Effects. This is the same effect. And then this effect, all slow motion, everything's jumping. I used the rain effect here again, the splash. I changed the direction, made it, made it look 3D. A cool little effect here. If it looks, it looks like he's running uh, it between these doors. So I had to sell that effect by making this uh, fence in the foreground looking like it's actually in front of him. So it's actually a separate Photoshop file that I had to import later into After Effects to adjust it to make it look like he's actually running through a gate. The scene used to be 2D, but it did not look good. And it just, I wanted something that was a little bit more believable. So I added this 3D space. So he throws the ninja stars. It gets blurry. It actually changes scenes here. Sometimes you can't catch it because it's really smooth, but the music stops and then all this goes into slow motion. I changed the speed of the rain in the back uh, when he gets hit to make it look like it's actually slowing down if you notice look carefully at the rain in the back So that was a lot of fun the glass shatter effect That's just the shatter effect in after effects You have to play around with the radius of the shatter and the direction just the 3d aspect of that to make it look right I think it looks okay here. Um, I definitely wanted to finish this video So I did all this in just two days So I wasn't spending too much time on any of these and this just see that little motion blur there when he jumps on his legs so there's a lot of that so I just repeated the same animation here After Effects uh, allows you to use the same composition as many times as you want and just place it into other sequences so anything that you do let me see if I can find this Final Fight so when they get kicked it's actually just their composition of them getting hit. So this is all it is, is this. That's all it is. I just made this, animated them same way I did the other ones. Uh, but the difference is I just timed when they go down by dragging this bar here. So you can see how I'm adjusting it because the keyframes of when they're going down, I can change by when I decide uh, this sequence will start. I mean composition. I hope that you found this video helpful. Hopefully I, I have inspired you to uh, open up After Effects, download it. There's a 30 day trial for all Adobe software. I hope that you will go and make your own animations. And if you do, please let me know. I would love to see what you guys come up with. It's always a blast to see what my subscribers and followers are doing. And uh, I really wanna see how I'm helping out you guys because it's really inspiring to me and it's what keeps me going uh, with my YouTube channel and, and making all these tutorials. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.